If you're tired of replacing LED bulbs way sooner than expected, you're not alone. Manufacturers promise long lifespans for these bulbs, but in reality, they never seem to last very long. Today, I'll cover some of the most common reasons that our bulbs are failing prematurely and six things that we can do to make them last a whole lot longer. But I have a question for you. Will an LED bulb still work with the wiring polarity reversed? Many people say they won't. So later on in the video, we'll wire up a light fixture with the hots and neutrals reversed and we'll find out for ourselves. Let me know down in the comments what you think will happen. Now let's get into why your bulbs might be dying early and what you can do about it. First, let's take a look at the bulbs. LED bulbs were supposed to be the end all solution, promising decades of use. They're energy efficient, but when you factor in the higher price and frequent replacements, are we really saving money? When LED bulbs first became commercially available back around the year 2000, they were supposed to last 25 times longer than a standard incandescent bulb. But back then, one bulb cost about 25 bucks. But those early bulbs used high-end components and they were built to last. I think the quality has decreased a bit since then, resulting in shorter lifespans if the bulb isn't used in the optimal conditions. Some brands do make decent bulbs, but there are a lot of choices out there. So tip number one, stick with the large well-known brand names and stay away from the unknown names that may have cheaper components. One exception is the Eco Smart bulbs sold by Home Depot. I believe these bulbs are manufactured by Cree Lighting Science and Philips, but they're sold under the EcoSmart brand name exclusive to Home Depot. These are a pretty decent choice in my opinion. So we have some decent bulbs now, but what can we do to make them last as long as possible? Turns out the problem might not just be the quality of the bulbs themselves, but also how we're actually using them. Have you ever noticed the ratings on the LED packaging? 13 years or 15,000 hours? Sounds pretty impressive, right? But here's the catch. That's based on ideal conditions and typically the light being on three hours per day. If the light's on much longer than that, the lifespan will be decreased. This light in my kitchen, which we leave on all the time, it's kind of a night light for us it has to be replaced about twice a year. That's only about 4,000 hours, way less than the manufacturer's rated lifespan. Once it begins to flicker, I know it needs to be replaced. One of the reasons this light doesn't last very long is simply because we leave it on all the time. So tip number two, turn off the lights when they're not needed. If you do that, you'll get much closer to the manufacturer's rated lifespan. That is, if we're using the proper bulb for the application. You may notice that this is a completely enclosed light fixture. The number one killer of LEDs is heat. Enclosed fixtures trap heat, causing bulbs to fail much faster. If we used a standard bulb in this fixture, it wouldn't last very long at all. So we need to make sure that the bulbs we're using are rated for the fixture type. If you don't see the label suitable for use in an enclosed fixture, then it isn't rated for use in an enclosed fixture. These bulbs have better heat sinks and special electronics that help them function in hot environments. Tip number three, we need to make sure the bulbs that we're using are rated for the fixture where they're being installed. Before we move on to the next three tips, which are super important, especially tip number six, which most people miss, I need to take a minute to talk about sleep. You know, we spend about a third of our lives in bed, so we should be comfortable, right? That's why I wanna thank Helix Sleep for sponsoring today's video. My wife and I were dealing with an old mattress that was killing my back, and we were actually in the process of shopping for a new mattress when Helix reached out about trying one of their mattresses, and the timing couldn't have been better. The first thing I did was take their sleep quiz. It only takes a couple of minutes. It asks about your height, 
your weight, your age, sleep position, what firmness you prefer, whether you sleep hot or cold, all that kind of stuff. I was a little nervous about ordering a mattress online without trying it out, but the quiz matched us with the perfect firmness. When it showed up, shipped free right to my door, it was rolled up in a box and I thought, there is no way this is going to be supportive enough. But we set it up and slept on it that night and it was very comfortable. Now, four months later, my back pain is almost completely gone and I'm waking up feeling rested instead of sore. Another important thing to us was staying cool at night. Our old mattress trapped heat and we'd wake up sweating. This Helix mattress does a much better job at regulating temperature, so we sleep much cooler. The mattress also comes with a 100 night sleep trial to make sure you love it. And right now, Helix is offering an exclusive partner offer of 27% off site wide. So head on over to helixsleep.com slash backyardmain or just scan the QR code on the screen. My wife and I love our new mattress and we think you will too. Thank you to Helix Sleep for sponsoring this video. So we have a few different fixture types, right? We have open fixtures, we have enclosed fixtures, but what about those partially enclosed fixtures? I've found that with most partially enclosed fixtures, the heat buildup will still shorten the life of the bulb considerably. I have some wall sconces here that are open on the top. We may be okay with a standard LED bulb here, but fixtures that face down are another story. Can lights, for example, will actually build up a fair amount of heat. The same is true for most light kits on our ceiling fans. They're not enclosed completely, but they still get pretty hot. So tip number four, unless we're using our LED bulb in a completely open fixture, or at least one that's open on the top, it's best to use bulbs that are rated for enclosed fixtures. They'll last a whole lot longer. Many of us, including me, will have plenty of dimmer switches around the house. They worked great for our incandescent bulbs for years. Then we replace the bulbs with LEDs, which is fine, but there's a catch. A standard LED is not dimmable. It might flicker, buzz, or dim erratically, and it'll definitely shorten the life of the bulb considerably. So tip number five, we need to make sure that our bulbs are marked as dimmable if we plan to install them in a dimmed light fixture. So we go out and buy dimmable LED bulbs, install them in a fixture, only to find we have the same issues or they dim but fail very quickly. The problem here is incandescent light dimmers use a different technology and they aren't really compatible with LED bulbs. Tip number six, we need to use dimmer switches that are rated for LED bulbs. So if we're going from incandescent to LEDs on a dim circuit, we need to replace the dimmer switch as well. This is one that many of us miss, but it's very important. Okay, before we run our reverse polarity test, let's do a quick recap of the tips. Avoid cheap no-name brands, they cut corners. Limit runtime by using timers, motion sensors, or just by turning off the lights. Be sure to use bulbs rated for the fixtures where they're being installed. And if we're dimming our bulbs, we need dimmable LEDs and a dimmer switch that's rated for LED lights. If we do all these things, we'll extend the life of our LEDs considerably. Okay, let's get to that reverse polarity test. Now, technically, AC power reverses polarity 120 times per second. So it's not like DC where one side is positive and the other is negative. But when we talk about reverse polarity in home wiring, we mean the hot and neutral are swapped, which can be a serious safety issue even if the bulb still works. I made a video a while back where I covered an old three-way switching method called the Deadly Chicago Three-Way. I'll link that video at the end of this one. The Chicago method reverses the power between the hot and the neutral at the light depending on the position of the switches. 
This wiring method has been banned for decades, but there was a lot of discussion about whether or not an LED light will function when the hot and neutral are reversed. So let's try it out. I just reversed the wiring on this lamp base. Let's flip the switch and see what happens. The reason this works is because LEDs have a driver that converts AC to DC for the LEDs. Reversing the hot and neutral doesn't matter because the driver still receives AC power and provides the LEDs with the correct polarity. Let's try a different LED. Yep, same deal here. It works just fine. While reversing the hot and neutral wires on a light fixture won't usually damage the bulb, it can create a safety hazard. If the wires are reversed, the metal shell of the light fixture will be live, posing a risk of electrical shock. So even though the light still works, this is not a safe method of wiring. I hope this video helped you out. And if it did, hit that like button. It helps the content spread to more people. And if you like electrical content, consider subscribing to the channel. Hey, I'll link that Chicago three-way video right here for you to watch next. I'm John from Backyard, Maine. I'll see you on the next one.